What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to talk about the Shadow. I'm going to give you what I consider to be the best build, so stick around. Let's get it. Welcome back to the channel. As I said, today we're going to talk about the Shadow. I'm going to give you what I consider to be the best build. I've done a little bit of testing. It seems to work fighting several different commanders. So without further ado, let's get into this. So the first and foremost, the primary, Ringwraith. As ever, Nazgul, you got to go with Ringwraith. We all know what it is. It's burn damage, burn damage, burn damage. Not too many counters, but there are counters for it. So, put all 15 of those points in Ring Wraith, then jump down, as usual, all 7 points in Nazgul Screech. We all know it works. The difference is we're not going to put max points right away into Morgul Poison. There is no point to do Morgul Poison right away. We were going to go up here to Undertake. We're going to put all 15 points into this. Then we will jump over to Plague, put all 7 points into that against 2 enemy targets, deals 260% poison damage. This also gives you Pursuit, because any attack that initiates poison damage gives you Pursuit. It's amazing, right? So, after you have your 7 points there, we will go over to the Respect 5 skills, Shape of the Void. If you do not have Respect 5, then you can go ahead and put 7 points into Delayed Plague, which is against 2 enemy targets, deals 114.2 poison damage on round 6. Now, I mean, it is round six, but fights usually drag out pretty good. At that point, you can also go ahead and put your points in Morgul Poison. But if you have Respect 5, then do not put points in Delayed Plague. Wait on Morgul Poison and put 15 points into Shape of the Void. First four rounds, Commander, each round, 90% chance of gaining follow-up. Follow-up initiates two normal attacks this round. So, if you get follow-up to proc, then you're going to get two extra attacks, which is huge in this game. Uh, follow-up might be, hands down, top three best things in the game to have on a commander. So, once you have your points in Shape of the Void... Then any leftover points you have, you can go ahead and go put in Morgul Poison. Everybody will be different here based on what respect you have for your commander. I am respect 9, almost 10, so I do have a few extra points. You will be different depending on your respect. Uh, so that is how... As far as skills go, I would do him. I've had really good success with this build. Uh, we will talk about gear for a little bit. Uh, so the gear is kind of up in the air. There is no uh, no set way to do your gear. It's all going to depend on what you're fighting. Uh, me personally, I run the Cutlass because of the allied melee units damage dealt. Uh, all in all, it is a really good weapon to use on just about any commander out there. You're, you, you can't go wrong with it. Uh, I personally, right now, I am running a Goblin Armor. It is a really good piece, but there are pieces in situations that are better. Uh... I think if you're you're trying to counter things or you're trying to do different different things with this commander, then you can change this up. As far as a helmet goes, right now I'm running Bone Mast, which you know gives you the chance to inflict madness. Once I max this thing out, I will every two rounds I will inflict madness for one round. So that's going to be a pretty pretty big thing with all the burn damage. Uh, pocket items are several different routes you can go. Uh, the drums of Moria is probably the best overall uh, accessory in the game. 
that's far as purple goes without being healing. If you want to run something healing, then it's not a bad thing. You can just as easily uh, run a gold. If you have a gold, if you don't have a gold, purple is the drum's going to be the way to go. Or you could technically, I guess you could say, you could go with something like this. Uh, and then go ahead and run Corsairs, which wouldn't be a bad idea either, but whatever you want to do, uh, drums or the Bone Talisman, can't go wrong with it. Uh, as far as troops go, the troops that I would run, i got some people attacking there, uh, the troops that I run on mine right now is going to be this setup right here, uh, I did about 100 to 108 trolls, then about 2,500 alchemists, and the rest reapers. This build worked really good on a non-Muma uh, alert. Uh, I can actually show you the report. Uh, I've tried the full-blown Witch King Troop layout setup, it works pretty good as well with Alchemist, Corsairs, Reapers, but I did find that this attack actually worked better, in my opinion. Uh, let me scroll down here, see if I can find this. Right here it is. This is the attack that I had with alerts. As you can see, this alerts was running uh, Trolls, Ram Riders, and Crushers. And pretty, pretty easily won this fight. Uh, it was, it was a pretty, pretty good hit. I actually wasn't expecting it to be, be quite as good as what it turned out to be. But as you can tell, this, this troop comp does work. Lurts is pretty good with any type of tanky unit. And this is two tanky, very tanky units with some damage. Uh, worked out pretty good. Uh... I have another attack here that's going to show the uh, setup with Witch King troops against Lurts. This is just a different troop composition fighting the same exact Lurts. And clearly the difference was real. The trolls in this fight made all the difference compared to the Corsair, so definitely would probably throw some trolls, throw something really tanky, depending on what you're playing on there, and let them just do work defensive-wise. Uh, outside of that, I think that just about covers it all, honestly. That's a, it's a pretty good Lurts build. Can't can't really go, go wrong with that fight against that Lurts, so... That is the Shadow video. I give him, you know, a pretty pretty good rating. I think he's a really good commander. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong using him at any point. Uh, which, can you really go wrong using a Nazgul at any point, period? I mean, the burn damage is, is really good. And there is counters. I mean, you know, if you, if you run into a commander with a counter, and it's running... You know, minus burn damage, running Dwarven troops with burn damage reduction, you know, doing all those things, running anti-stun, then, then yeah, you're, you're going to have problems. Uh, it is the game, so it's, you know, 50-50 on adjustments. If you run into that particular person that's got that build just to beat you and to reduce your burn damage and to run anti-stun, then you switch it up, you... That's the reason why we have many commanders. So, uh, all in all, uh, Shadow is a really good commander. I think anybody can play with him. I think you can you can win a lot of fights with him. I think your gear is up to you. I think it's a personal choice. You have to decide what gear you want to use. And it's not a bad thing to have a backup set of gear. So, with that being said, hit that subscribe button. Smash the like. Until next time. See you out.